Hi there, this is Physics, Chapter 9, Thermal Properties of Matter. Lesson 1, Internal Energy. Now, in this chapter, we will deal with four key concepts. First is the internal energy, in particular the internal kinetic energy and the internal potential energy of a substance. The second is dealing with melting and freezing. Basically, we are asking the question, what happens to a solid substance when it is heated until it melts? And also the reverse. What happens to liquid substance when it is cooled until it freezes? And the third point is regarding boiling and condensation. Basically, the question is this. What happens to a liquid substance when it is heated until it boils? And also the reverse. What happens to a gas substance when it is cooled until it condenses? And finally, the concept of evaporation and how is evaporation different from boiling. Now, to start this lesson on internal energy, let me bring you back to the chapter on kinetic model of matter. Let's recall that all matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms or molecules. And these molecules are basically a group of two or more atoms chemically combined together. Now, the kinetic model of matter states that tiny particles that make up matter are always in continuous motion. So, always remember this. They are always moving and therefore, if they are moving, they must have some form of energy called kinetic energy. Also, recall this table which compares the arrangement, the movement and the forces of attraction of particles. Let's compare the forces of attraction in the three states. It's strongest in solid, followed by liquid, and the weakest in gas state. And why is this so? Well, I'm sure you know that to change a substance from solid to gas state, we need to heat it. So the thermal energy from the heating has caused the weakening of the forces of attraction between the particles. Hence, there is an increase of potential, uh, potential energy between the particles. The weaker the forces of attraction, it means that there is more stored energy present that weakens the forces of attraction. So in short, since each and every single particles are always moving, whether they are in solid, liquid or gas state, we know now that all these particles must have kinetic energy. If you to compare between the three states, I would say that you can tell by now the kinetic energy of matter in the gas states would be the highest because they are able to move freely and very very quickly. And for every single one of these particles as well, they are affected by the forces of attraction. In other words, this means that there will always be potential energy present between the particles as well. And as we move from solid to liquid and to gas, as the forces of attraction becomes weaker, we also recognize that the potential energy between these particles will also increase. Hence, when we say that all substances have internal energy, we now know that the internal energy of a substance is the sum of the average kinetic energies and potential energies of all its particles. For those who are interested to find out more, you may want to explore the PHET simulation on states of matter. You can either Google this, or you can actually look for the reference in the description part of the video. So now we know that the total internal energy of a substance is actually equal to the sum of the average kinetic energy and potential energy of the particles. All right? So let's look at it a little bit further. This kinetic energy, we know that it's related to its movement, to the, particle, the, to the movements of the particles, Hence, it depends on the vibration and the speed of the molecules in that object or the substance. How about the potential energy? Well, you have learned as well, the potential energy depends on the chemical or potential energy. And um, it is also something that is related to the intermolecular forces of attraction and distance between the molecules in the object. So, we now know that the internal Ke is related to the speed of moving particles. In other words, the faster the particles move, the higher the internal kinetic energy. Further to that, 
It is also interesting to note that the kinetic energy of particles affects temperature of the substance. When kinetic energy of particles increases, it causes the temperature of a substance to also increase. When kinetic energy decreases, temperature also drops. If the temperature remains constant, for example during melting of ice, which occurs at 0 degrees Celsius, this means that the kinetic energy of the particles remain the same. This also means that the speed of particles will remain unchanged. Now, internal potential energy is related to the chemical energy, in particular the forces between particles and the distance between them. When a substance reaches a temperature that is about to cause it to change state, for example, when ice reaches 0 degrees Celsius, thermal energy gained by this ice is changed into potential energy. This increase in potential energy helps the particles to overcome the forces of attraction, resulting in substance changing state. Compared to internal kinetic energy, internal potential energy is a little bit more challenging to understand at this point, don't you agree? But don't worry, I will, cover the, I will cover this in more detail in the next video. So at this point, I ask you just to remember this. Internal potential energy is simply related to the forces of attraction and a change of state. It is not involved when there is a change in temperature or when the speed of particles are changed. So that brings us to the end of this uh, video. So I will end this off by a quick summary. Right? So internal energy of a substance is basically a sum of the internal kinetic energy and the internal potential energy of the substance. The internal kinetic energy is due to the motion of particles and the, this motion of particles will also affect the, the temperature of the substance. When kinetic energy increases, temperature increases and when kinetic energy drops, temperature drops. For internal potential energy, this is due to the interatomic or intermolecular forces of attraction. This is related to a change of state. And in particular, we will be discussing melting and boiling. And during these states of melting and boiling, there will be an increase in potential energy. And during freezing and condensing, that will reduce the potential energy of the substance. Right. Thanks for listening.